I wish you all the best in life, it's just that our season of friendship is over. I just no longer have the emotional bandwidth for you. SHUT UP! Have you been a victim of therapy speak, the HRification of relationships? Well, you know what, Sweeney? This video is for you! For the uninformed, therapy speak is prescriptive language describing certain psychological concepts and behaviours, as stated in the famous Bustle article. Thank you very much for voting because I'm so glad that you chose this topic because it's been on my little mind for a while. I did actually talk about this in my female friendships video, but I cut out a massive bunch for that video because obviously I'm trying to keep my videos to about half an hour. So instead we're dedicating an entire video to this topic because it impacts all walks of life. So when this Bustle article came out, everybody started to share their own experience with it and I saw lots and lots of comments and I felt sorry for every single one of them. And the thing is, I've dealt with this too. <laughs> wow, it really makes you feel unvalued not only as a friend but even as a human being. It's almost like conversations have sort of vanished in favour of rehearsed statements and perfect speeches. And then when someone comes up to them saying that their feelings are hurt, they get told that they're gaslighting. Um, that's lying for those of you who have not had to deal with therapy speak. I've actually noticed this has crept into reality TV too. The thing that we once thought was sacred as our piece of trash that would never stop being trashy has now been infiltrated with therapy speak. I was watching my chosen form of trash, which is a merit at first sight Australia, despite all of the things it's done which are terrible, I still keep coming back to it. It's not a good thing. There was this fellow called Harrison, who was a walking red flag, who kept on actually using all of these phrases and using manipulative tactics including therapy speak to manipulate his wife um, to kind of like destroy her from the inside actually and to also break up all the other couples like he kept on trying these tactics and actually it sadly worked sometimes i also saw that others using therapy speak labeling people as narcissistic um saying that all sorts of different people were gaslighting like it was just very bizarre actually seeing kind of real life people using this because I've seen it online but then in real life it, there is something that's a bit more icky about it. But therapy is good right? Like it's a positive thing to work on yourself to set healthy boundaries and to actually find different ways to cope with the mess that is the world. I am not trying to bash therapy at all, I think it is very useful. But the thing is that a lot of people can't afford it. It costs around about $150 to $200 each session here in Aotearoa, um, so oh, it's, it's a bit unaffordable for most of us, shall we say. So of course, where do people turn? They will turn to social media because people want to understand what is going wrong and then you find all these different coping strategies. It does make sense how we've kind of gone down this spiral, but Instagram therapy is not really therapy. <laughs> <laughs> the Bustle article. Now Bustle are not the first to write about this at all, this is just the one that sort of popped off because they use like the terminology that would mean that everybody would be able to like cling on to it, you know what I mean? It's kind of like a clickbaity title. You've got this tagline, you can run with it. But the thing is that therapists and professionals were actually bringing this up many years ago when they saw this starting to crop up on Instagram in particular, but it's now moved on to TikTok where people are starting to self-diagnose themselves with all sorts of things. But getting an actual diagnosis for something like ADHD is an incredibly costly thing. I knew someone who had spent $5,000, that's here in Aotearoa, to get that diagnosis. There are articles written which you have to pay to read, so I'm not going to read them but I will just screenshot this for you, from the New York Times and also from the New Yorker in 2021. In the Bustle article they actually share experiences from people who have dealt with this in various sort of situations and it's really heartbreaking seeing like the impact, like the emotional, mental impact of having this happen to you. They share how uncertain they felt, how they felt like they were a bad person, and they had to go and ask others if there's something wrong with them. And to quote the article, Darby Saxby, a clinical... Sorry, my cat has decided now is the time to use a litter tray. Darby Saxby, a clinical psychologist and professor of psychology at the University of Southern California, says that some of the therapy speak can add more weight to what's ultimately a one-sided observation. It feels more official, more legitimized, more of a final sound in judgment when you give somebody a diagnostic label or you label a friendship in a particular way. But people in relationships are fluid and having fixed ways to describe particular relationships or individuals cheats us of some of that flexibility. Manics. 
when someone that you're in a relationship with, whatever the relationship may be, whether it's friendship, romantic relationship, familial, anything, um, having that person say that you're gaslighting them, that you're being manipulative, that you're toxic, like actually labeling you as any of those things is a hugely impactful thing because we've been sort of trained to know that psychological terminology and being labeled as being someone that is um, negatively impacting someone's psychological health is a terrible thing to do. Whether you've been through that with an abusive childhood, whether you've dealt with that in multiple other ways like through abusive relationships, anything like that, you never want to, as a friend or someone that's in a relationship with someone, like you never want to inflict that kind of pain. So of course this is going to naturally eat you up. I've got a lot of sympathy for people that this has happened to because for me it lasted for ages me just doubting myself and I, I was just like what what have I done wrong? To diagnose is to weaponize. Us humans we are fallible creatures. I touch on this very often on this channel but I I also think that we're capable of positive change. I personally believe that no matter what our age is, we are capable of making positive change, of changing our minds, no matter what. I always like to hold on to that because otherwise I'd lose all hope and I don't really feel like doing that today, you know? Okay, cool. But the thing is, we humans can also be, as Pretty Woman put it best, slippery little suckers and very manipulative. And with how widespread therapy speakers become and how it's so easy to sort of teach the tricks of the trade through alpha male podcasts, wannabe people, through pickup artists, through um, just your own research into this, just by, if you have a nefarious mind, if you've got nefarious intentions, you can literally just browse to your heart's content and understand all of this stuff that will destroy someone. Because <laughs> as much as most of it is made to help people heal, um, just, it can be used against you. <laughs> It's genuinely really not good and I just want to play this one maths clip so you can sort of understand and see what's happening here. But what, what blows my mind, Harrison, is that you literally texted me and you literally said, I'm not leaving, yet you wrote leave. You threw in the towel because I'm not giving you enough. When, when you did, have I, when did I write, I'm not leaving? Finish. Show me where I wrote, I'm not leaving. I'm not going anywhere. So yeah. literally what you said to me. But your, your twist, you just said uh, the words, I'm not leaving. You literally, I'm not leaving and I'm not going anywhere are two, that's irrelevant. You're it's... gaslighting me. You're saying that I said something I didn't say. Hey, thanks for today. It was really nice for us to talk about an argument. Thanks for sharing all you did. I'm not going anywhere. Where does it say I'm not leaving? You're trying I'm to, not going anywhere and I'm not leaving. It's totally different because you're trying to twist that no, into me saying that I lied about the said, No, I did. When I said that you lied, you literally put words in my mouth. Harrison. That's what you're actually no, doing. No, you literally said I'm not going anywhere. You're, I'm gaslighting you. You're you literally are. sitting here gaslighting me. No. You put words in my you're mouth. You literally said you gaslight. You're narcissist, Harrison. To me, and if it ha Well, go ahead and no, make I'm that face. This is you're the face I got. Now, there is such a thing as healthy boundaries, and I actually put them on my comment sections because I don't let people say, you know, hate speech, like whether it's sexist, homophobic, transphobic, racist, like I don't allow for that sort of stuff in my comment section. And that is me setting a boundary. However, people have said to me that I'm taking away free speech, that I'm a fascist. Um, what else have they said? I'm silencing them, that I'm racist towards white people. Um, but just like with TikTok or Instagram therapy, it's people putting a label on something without actually really understanding what they're saying. And it's trying to control people by putting a negative label on them. And it's therapy speak can definitely be used in this way. And I've seen it happen, not only in the Married at First Sight show, but also in online spaces. It's trying to use academic language and labels to attack and silence people. The issue with therapy speak is people don't fully understand exactly what they're saying because I don't know, they haven't gone through however many years it takes to become a clinical psychologist. It's not really about communication or trying to see both sides or actually having an objective look at things. It's more about being able to have your thought pattern just get to them and have them fully agree with you. It's like, it's a very one-sided thing and that's quite the problem <laughs> when you want to be able to have open communication which relies on, I don't know, listening. 
it's focusing on just you as an individual's needs. Like this person that wants to use a therapy speak, it's just them creating their own little world and everyone else has to fit into this little narrow scope of things. The thing is that I understand because we as women have been socialized to be so self-sacrificing that we get ourselves to the point of complete burnout, of not being able to carry on any more load. But at the same time, like, <laughs> taking that out on people who are meant to be your friends and setting these boundaries with them in ways which aren't necessarily about saying I just want some alone time it's actually just like no you're a toxic person I don't have time for you anymore in my life um I'm creating a healthy boundary but I valued our season of friendship that's not how humans talk <laughs> we keep saying that we want to have community and the thing is in my female friendships video so many people have been struggling to find female friendships but how is it actually possible unless people communicate properly properly, listen on both sides and realize that not everybody has got the same lived experience. Like I say this all the time, we're all very different, we've all experienced different things and it's all relative to what each person has experienced. But how do we expect community to happen when people are labeled as being toxic over a simple disagreement or over different abilities to do something? Boundaries can and should be set. I'm not saying that people should just get rid of their boundaries and be like every time that I have my phone in my hand I'm free because I've already made a whole video about like you need to look after your free time. It's just, there's a, there's different ways to go about it, I guess you'd say. It's not necessarily just about saying like, I'm prioritizing myself. It's like, I just want to have some downtime. <laughs> that's all, like, everybody needs to rest and recharge. Like, that's not a negative thing to do. But when you're telling people that they're toxic and you have to create a boundary from them, um, unless someone's being actively harmful, there's not really a, an, a need for that, I wouldn't go saying. <laughs> when someone's setting a boundary with someone else, it's normally because this other person is kind of like poison and the boundary is there to stop the poison. So you're equating this person, at least in my mind, this is how I view it. You're equating this person to being poison to them. And so then this person's like, oh my God, am I actually poison? What have I done? And so then of course they'll start on this self-doubt spiral. Like, what is the actual goal of having this sort of a conversation? Because is it just for you to be like, yay, I'm right. Like, what do you expect to get out of it when you just think you're toxic? Diagnosing somebody and then cutting them off completely isn't exactly a way to build community. <laughs> You know how I kind of said that there's two sides to this therapy speak coin? So you've got people that are using it to kind of impose their thoughts onto others and then you've got other people that are using it to manipulate others. I've definitely noticed the fact that people who are a bit more abusive, they understand how to use therapy speak in order to um, say the right things, to be like, well, I did apologize, I said it in this way. Your feelings are completely valid. I completely understand that. I've noticed Oprah doing that too in my Lindsay Lohan video. You're saying the right things, but it's the fact that there's authenticity missing. But all of the right beats are being hit when it comes to apologies from people that know how to use therapy speak to their advantage. You know how to say, your feelings are completely valid. What I did was in the wrong. Um, I'll never do this again, I hadn't thought about it that way. When there's nothing genuinely there, it's kind of like, you know, the whole YouTuber apology thing all over again. Like, you hit the right beats, but it's just hitting the beats as opposed to having soul to a song. It's kind of like, you've got the notes there, but you don't actually have the passion there. You know, I, I'm trying to make an analogy here and I'm guessing it's not coming across very well. <laughs> this is what I mean when I'm on about the risk of therapy speak being weaponized because the knowledge is out there for anybody to be able to use, but it can be used in a manipulative way to make the actual victim self-doubt. And I personally don't see that as being a very good thing. When it comes to mental health, you know that I'm all here for people feeling better. I've made a whole video about like the many, many issues here. But when there's a lack of understanding in a way to actually manipulate this language, I just sort of feel like it's quite dangerous. We could be really quick to label people as narcissists, sociopaths, like whatever. But the thing is that we can't really do that because it's an armchair diagnosis. Now, I've talked many a time about the inaccessibility of mental health um, support, and that is a huge problem. I It's a massive systemic issue, but I, we also all acknowledge, right, that if people had healthy housing, if people had easy access to food and all the other things that they need to be able to survive, we wouldn't really have as much of a mental health crisis in a way that would be. Also, if we weren't hurtling towards a like very bleak future with the climate crisis. <laughs> 
My question is, what happens when you're telling someone who's in a vulnerable state already that they're actually toxic? What happens then? From this article from Chat Elaine, according to Dr. Saunia Ahmed, director and clinical psychologist at the Toronto Psychology Clinic, being wrongfully labelled can also have a deep and long-lasting emotional impact on a person. It can lead to more stigma and shame, especially for a society where we don't really treat mental illness like other health issues that are physical in nature. Mental health terminology can be misused or misunderstood. In the article, it also points out the actual medical diagnosis differences between what we think we say when calling someone trauma bonded, what you, you know, actually is. They provide a few examples there, so it's linked down below along with all of my sources as per usual. Humans, we are messy, we are clumsy, we say the wrong things, but we're also very capable of having empathy, of being able to listen, learn, change, grow. We fully can all do that. Approaching things in an inquisitive way is so much more helpful rather than just going in with a fixed mindset being like, I saw this behavior, therefore I am labeling you. You said this one thing, therefore I am labeling you. Honestly, I don't even know how this would impact neurodivergent people as well because this is a whole other level that I personally cannot relate to. So if you're neurodivergent, I'd love to hear your take on this as well. I couldn't find anything in my reading, but honestly, I'm so sure that Therapy Speak has just screwed up communication even more. Now, if someone's genuinely your friend, they will be aware of your mental health struggles. If you genuinely can't handle talking to the people at the moment because you're in like a pit of depression, been there, fully understand. Sometimes people don't really want to like show um, their mental health struggle because it makes it even harder to like talk about. I know I've definitely been there. Sometimes you just don't want to say like how bad you're feeling because you don't want to have to go through that with someone and potentially bring them down as well. Like if they are your friend, they will wait. Like I've got multiple friends who have different mental health things going on and some of them they really don't want to like talk for a long time and it's like that's okay I'm more than happy to wait I will check in on you make sure that you're doing fine let you know that I'm thinking of you because we're friends you hold space for your friends it's not really a big demanding ask and if you get frustrated with people um, that have got different ways of life you know what I mean like if they kind of function in a different way because if they've got chronic illness or whatever if you get frustrated with them like frustration is like a normal emotion of someone that like suddenly cancels on you or something I guess assume the best when it comes to friendships because pretty sure that if a friend has to cancel on something they'll be feeling kind of bad about doing that to be honest with you like this sort of attitude of, oh, they did this, therefore they don't care about me, I've just labeled it now, uh, they're toxic, they're out of my life, like just cutting someone off like that. If I cut people off who have ever been dealing with something and couldn't make an event or whatever, like, I would have no friends. <laughs> So let's just get on to my final thoughts. If you feel safe enough sharing, you don't have to give any specifics, but have you had therapy speak used against you? Especially in friendships, like I'd be really keen to know. If you want to share, no pressure, of course. Have you also noticed an uptick in this trend as well? Like, especially since 2019. <laughs> in my mind, therapy should be way more accessible to people, but obviously, <laughs> As much as I want to change the whole world, I can't. Um, so I do understand why people can be seeking out these things online to try and like understand what they're going through, understand why someone's behaving a certain way or whatever, but it takes a lot more depth than that and a lot more understanding than that. It kind of stops encouraging people from having natural conversations with others. You know what I mean? Unless, of course, this is a very unhealthy relationship, unhealthy things are going on. You know what I mean? Like that word unhealthy kind of covers all manner of sins, whether it's from abuse, actual manipulation, actual terrible things happening. People tell others to go to therapy, but the way that it's used is sort of like a band-aid deflection. Um, and then they say, oh, I don't have enough bandwidth for you. I personally feel like therapy is kind of an individualized band-aid solution a lot of the time and it creates this more division between the haves and the have-nots because if you have the money you can go to therapy you can pay for that sort of stuff if you don't you're just sort of left to stew here and feel like everyone could be potentially turning against you and you may be a narcissistic gaslighter I don't know um, so, of course, I understand why people would be turning to social media for answers. It makes perfect sense. But maybe just 
kind of with a little bit of scepticism as well <laughs> because it's, it's most of the time not very helpful. Just check that people are actually qualified. <laughs> I don't know. In the Western world, we've been taught for generations at this point that individualism is in fact a very good thing. I've made an entire video about it, but individualizing um, these sort of problems kind of makes people be insular as opposed to think about others when they're potentially setting boundaries. You know, like those sort of impacts that you're leaving on other people, it's like, if you're making a boundary to just never talk to a friend ever again, then one of their support systems is completely cut off too. Like we need each other. People say that they want community. That takes time and effort, as I've talked about in quite a few videos now. We can just recognize that therapy speak, whilst it may have helped in some ways, because it's good for people to be able to understand academic terms and be able to recognize stuff and understand like what their therapist is saying and whatever. At the same time, diagnosing people and having a lot of manipulative risks is not inherently a very positive thing. The thing is that relationships aren't business transactions. Maybe we should stop trying to treat them like that. Thank you lovelies so much for watching, I really do appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, um, comment down below what your thoughts are on this because I'd be very interested to hear. Um, I think it's going to be kind of in line with what I've been thinking, but I may be wrong. I have been wrong before. Everybody can be wrong, because what are we? We're human. AI just confidently lies and then doubles down on it, but we as humans, we don't have to do that. <laughs> okay, lovelies, have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Anytime that I wear light blue and I have these colors on, Elsa. Um, you can make your comparisons if you want. I would much rather be Rapunzel though, just saying, even though I probably more strongly relate to Cinderella or Elsa. Feel free to compliment me on my fresh haircut. I get one three times a year. <laughs>